Hell, I'm Chris Geiger. I'm LaCroix Scott, and today we are reviewing Past Lives, a film by Celine Song. When I saw the trailer for this, I thought instantly, I am going to really like this movie. Mm. I think part of it was the song. Stay was the song that they used with the trailer, which is not the Rihanna version. It was a different one, but really very like emotionally moving. Mm. I just, I don't think I remember a, a song with the trailer. I just remember like, I don't know, the way that this film was shot, it just looks so beautiful. Like premium television quality, mm-hmm. but then it seems just so real because it's so, you know, it, it's very much, and I don't know, maybe this is the lens of living in New York, but you recognize a lot of, I don't want to say like tourist attractions because it's not, but it, you notice all these everyday kind of tentpole places that you visit or you walk by. And it has that feel that's very familiar. Um, And then it has like this gloss and sheen of meeting up with somebody like a childhood friend and your the anticipation and kind of like the the butterflies. And I really feel like the trailer kind of brought out that, you know, what if scenario of, you know, when you were a kid and then now you're an adult and you look back on things like, uh, what happens if things were not on the path? We're on a path where, you know, was a clear path and I decided to step out of that path and take something, take up something else. Very much of, you know, you move to the the big city or your version of a big city and then someone from your past calls and they're like, hey, want to meet up with you or want to catch up? And you're just like, uh. It was interesting too that they had that sort of, oh, spoiler, that they had that sort of middle range relationship right where they weren't Mm -hmm. together like in the same place but they were communicating via video conference like video chat and phone and email and uh, and that went on for a while yeah so it was it wasn't just like they knew each other when they were kids and then fast forward 25 years they are starting up again there was this middle component where they were relating to each other's to each other as adults but mm-hmm. it never really, I guess, formulated at at that point. And so it was it was an interesting wrinkle to add in. Yes. Yeah, I definitely agree. Because it's it's very subtle. It's like reconnecting with somebody, but then it's no definition. So it's like kind of like, what are we? And then it's also the element of, well, if we're in two different cities living our own lives, then who how are we going to manage this? And that becomes, you know, spoiler spoiler alert um the breaking point in their friendship because it's like oh are you gonna come to see me am I gonna go to see you like when are we going to see each other in person and it's interesting because sometimes when you meet in person or you know that fantasy feeling or that feeling of connecting is very different because you the behavior on like a Skype or like a video chat is very different from when you meet somebody in person you see, you know, Nora and she's married and very comfortable. And then it becomes a kind of what if, and it, it's just, it's amazing to see because it's all these subtleties of like, what's going to happen and all this stuff. And it's so, I feel like this film captures so many non-traditional emotions in like a romantic comedy. And it leans, I felt like it leaned more comedy. I, I just thought it it was just really fascinating to to watch. I wasn't familiar with the lead character. I hadn't seen her in anything prior. Although I know she has, you know, a, a bunch of work out there. Mm-hmm. The only person that I recognized was her husband, who was mm-hmm. in the movie First Cow. So that's what I remember him as. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I feel like he looks familiar, but I just can't. I mean, obviously, I didn't do my due diligence on IMDb. Oh. Is well, he in this Maisel? I don't know. But the only other okay. thing I had seen him in, because I did look him up. I was like, guys, he looks so familiar. Um, the only other thing I had seen him in was First Cow. But he, I think I'm sure he's done other things. Yeah, he looks um, very familiar. But I really liked his character as kind of like the guy who's just kind of watching all of this happen. I mean, he does articulate in one scene like how he feels, but then that's kind of it. He just kind of lets it play out. 
around. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like he was chaperoning. And then he gets his moments in with Hai Song, I, I think. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a it's almost like a checks and balance type of thing of kind of like, hey, so are you guys caught up? And and he's trying to be the understanding husband. But there's so many, you know, it there's so many layers. It's you know, it's really good. Really, really good. Makes you think. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna share the slides. So close again. Yeah. I really feel like so I was a little late in seeing this film relative to like you and some other folks um partially because it was very hard to find a theater that i think there's only th- two theaters around me that had this film but i definitely think that this should be uh around for a very long time <laughs> relative to you know the big blockbuster films like this is a film i feel like will resonate with anybody who especially like had had to manage friendships relationships globally through you know the internet largely cuz you know you're you're having a video conference you're it's it's real time action and looking at you know kind of where your life is today um and thinking about you know what if i just stayed my course and did my thing and all this stuff it's really great I highly recommend it. Agree. I like the story, although I do feel like it's very quiet and slice of life. Mm -hmm. But I was, based on the trailer, I was expecting something more to happen. Like something more over. Like, so for her to make like a definitive decision or for like something to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then I gave the soundtrack a 2.5 because of the trailer more than anything else. I didn't really notice the soundtrack in the movie itself, but I was waiting for that song to come in. Oh. It it didn't. But those are are really my only two kind of big variances from yours. Cinematography, I thought they did a good job, but to me it was just average for the type of movie it was. Mm. Although I do really, I always love seeing New York in movies. Which I wonder, I mean, I would definitely feel the same way about Cincinnati. If there were like lots of movies set in Cincinnati, I think I'd watch those too. (laughs) What movies are set in Cincinnati? Not that many, but I feel like if there were, I would watch them with the same like feeling of like, oh, I'm like, that place is familiar. Actually, there are a decent number of movies. Harlem Nights was set in Cincinnati. Interesting. Well, oh, is it some parts were filmed in Cincinnati? Yeah, yeah, some parts are filmed in Cincinnati because Cincinnati has this one neighborhood called Over the Rhine. It has the highest, I think it has the highest per capita number of Italianate architecture buildings in the country. Like it's just these old, like five and six story buildings. And it was like they're in decent shape, or at least they look decent from the outside. (laughs) Um, And that was, I guess, the kind of look and feel they wanted to go for in portraying um harlem nights so that's but yeah like i think they were doing last year they were shooting some motorcycle movie with tom hardy in cincinnati interesting yeah so cincinnati does get like a decent number of uh milk i think was in cincinnati Uh, oh okay wow but there you go (laughs) do you that's good to know yeah do you have anything to plug in this episode? Well, it is summer movie season. So lots of films to watch. So yeah, starting off with Indiana Jones, the latest Indiana Jones, obviously. And of course, in the next couple of weeks, the double feature of uh, Barbie and Oppenheimer. And Mission Impossible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mission Impossible. How about you? What is, uh, what do you have to plug? Same. Um, I would say those movies that you just mentioned, uh, plus, uh, there's a Korean movie at AMC 25 this weekend called The Child. Seems like an action drama. So that should be fun. Um, and yeah, it's a long weekend for me. I have Monday and Tuesday off. So I'm hoping to get to the theater more than once, um, over the long weekend. 
uh, amongst other things. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.